Hey, what's going on guys? Tugi here, and I still can't believe I'm making this video. I will cut right to the chase, although I will say some of you already know what I'm about to announce. You may have seen it elsewhere, and that's fine. I wanted to let everybody know, though, that I was recently invited to take part in a tournament alongside other YouTubers and Twitch streamers, and of course, I jumped at the opportunity to be involved. I will be in this year's Stanley Hut playoffs. But before I get into the details, I want to thank not only everyone else involved in this tournament, whether behind the scenes or fellow participants. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys. Like I said, I'm still in shock that I was invited, but for me it's validation and confirmation that what we have going on here is turning some heads. And this wouldn't have happened without you guys. Now whether You've been around here for the long haul. You know, certain guys like Icehawk, Pat Rivard, my favorite Finn, Polly. And if I left you out, I'm sorry, but I can't sit here and name people all day. There's 3,000 plus of you guys. Whether you've been around for that long, whether you're a more recent sub, thank you. It is because of you that I get this opportunity. All of that aside, though, let's get into the details of this tournament. And I guess first thing... Games per series. Games per series is probably going to be a frequently asked question. The first two rounds are going to be best of three. The third round, the conference finals, are a best of five. And the Stanley Cup, or the Stanley Cup final, will be a standard best of seven series. Definitely a tournament of attrition. The bracket, though, interesting on so many levels, to say the least. Using the real-world bracket, of course, every participant was assigned a team at random, and it's created some insane matchups. And for me, I, I still think I'm being ripped here. I think this is a huge joke on me, but I ended up with the Ottawa Senators, because of course I did. <laughs> but I will say I'm excited to use them mainly because, of course, this tournament isn't taking place in versus mode. It's ultimate team-based, and any player that has been with your respective team at one time is eligible to be used past, present, or even future if it's a draft pick that maybe hasn't played yet or only played a couple of games, which gives me and everyone else so many options. There is one catch though. There's a limit. Otherwise, I'd definitely get smoked by my opponent, who of course is using the Bruins, as he'd have all the heroes, the legends, you factor in Sagan and Dougie Hamilton. It would be a ridiculous team. The limit is that the combined overall from your 18 skaters can't be higher than 1,600, 1,600 points. To put it simply, you add the overall number for each individual player, and if those combined numbers are higher than 1,600, your team is ineligible. Goalies don't factor in, though, to that final number, so anyone is fair game as far as goaltenders go. But it does bring a further strategy element to this tournament and should result in some very unique teams. Which brings me to my team, the team I will be using against Brian Stormed in the first round. And I'll say this, thankfully, there was a bit of help in acquiring some of these players. Having just started Matthews vs. Line a, and dropping over 1 million coins on that Team of the Year Line, a, needless to say, I couldn't afford the big time names on this team. I mentioned in the first Matthews vs. Line A video, which if you haven't checked that out, go check it out. I had a decent coin total, I mentioned that. Well, most of that coin total has gone into building this team, as you can tell by the, uh, by the current coin total. But yeah, top line, who else? Of course, Mr. 50 in 07 is on my team, alongside Jason Spezza and the team of the year, Mark Stone. Now, in Forks Battalion, I've been able to use the likes of the Christmas Artemi Panarin and Mike Richards, and I would say both Heatley and Stone are of that caliber, and I can't wait to see what they can do for me. Jason Spezza, his lack of high-end speed might be an issue, but he's there for a reason. His puck handling, passing, and offensive awareness are fantastic, and he is the setup man for the other two, and I wouldn't be surprised regardless of how many games we end up playing, if he is our assist leader on this team. On the second line, we have 90 overall, Movember Mike Hoffman. 
87 overall expansion Kyle Turris and 88 overall Bobby Ryan. I'm calling this the line A line because needless to say, I'd probably be running with the Stanley Cup Bobby Ryan card, if not for Patrick Line. But regardless, this current Ottawa line will hopefully do wonders for me. And who knows, Hoffman could get an upgrade or two if he continues to score at the pace he is. And if he does, my team is still fine. I'm currently sitting at a combined overall total of 1598. So as long as he doesn't get an upgrade to a 93, my team is good to go. We jump to the third line, and it's the opposite. We have a trio of former Senators, starting off with the 89 overall expansion Nick Foligno. He's centered by the 87 overall expansion Zibanejad, and the 86 overall expansion Silverberg. Easy for me to say. Quite a bit of speed with this line, and I was really surprised by Nick Foligno's card. He has some tremendous stats despite a pretty cheap price on the market. So I'm obviously intrigued to see what this line can do for me. And on the fourth line, and that's where we had to take a little bit of a hit due to the 1,600 overall limit. But it is also where the future aspect of the team building starts to come into play. We have the 86 overall international player of the game, Philip Chalapic. 93 speed, acceleration, and agility. That makes him an incredible threat. He's centered by the 87 overall expansion, Derek Broussard. And on the right, 71 overall, Francis Perron. I, I tried to say it in a more French accent, but I, I, yeah, I just embarrassed myself even further. I really wanted to use Logan Brown's 75 overall Team of the Week card, but he is apparently extinct. I was tempted to use Logan Brown's 72 overall base card, or even use someone like Philip All on HV71, or Tobias Lindbergh, but Perron has Wicked Wristers as a synergy, and he helps activate that along with Mike Hoffman and Danny Heatley. Not like the latter two need that upgrade, but it does make having Perron in the lineup a bit more tolerable. He's still on a line with two capable and speedy players, so I don't expect him to be too much of an anchor. Overall, my thoughts on the 12 forwards, it's looking pretty damn good. Is it as great as it could be? Technically, no. But I do think this team is good enough to get the job done. It's just a matter of whether or not I can win the games on that given day. Jumping to the defense, needless to say, it's definitely on my shoulders because this is about as good as it could get. The top pairing of the hero Wade Redden with the 99 overall team of the year, Eric Carlson, should just be illegal. You shouldn't be allowed to have that pairing. It's unreal. The second pairing... Very respectable as well. 87 overall international player of the game, Thomas Shabbat, with the 92 overall milestones of Dan Ochara. And the third pairing, a bit of a drop off, but again, still pretty damn good. We have the 88 overall milestone, Dion Phaneuf. Again, I'd love to use the Stanley Cup card. It's expensive as hell right now. And he is paired up with the 85 overall expansion, Cody CC. Very slim pickings for right handed shots from Ottawa, which is why we have the extra lefty in the lineup goaltending not ray emery not ben bishop i've gone with the 88 overall team of the week craig anderson not even the best version of him in the game but i put a little bit of thought into the synergies which is why we have the base brian elliott as the backup and hell i mentioned synergies so let's get into it wicked wristers is applied as previously mentioned, defensively responsible is also applied for Chalapic, Shabbat, Chara, and Wade Redden. A movable object is active for Chara, Phaneuf, and Mark Stone. Puck Hog is active for Turris and Carlson. And that brings me to our two team synergies. We have two of them active, Cycle Game and End to End Awareness. Like I said, I am extremely happy with this team and for good reason i feel like it has a good balance aside from you know having a bronze in the fourth line but there you have it that is my team for the stanley hut playoffs it's still crazy to think that i'm involved and despite my competitive nature which uh made itself known in yesterday's videos i'm not all that concerned about how i do it's more about being grateful for the opportunity rather than focusing solely on winning and again i have you guys to thank for this so as we wrap up this video, I do want to mention that there are quite a few links down in the description below. 
The first links to Bojo's original announcement video, so absolutely go check this out. Also listed, the channels and or other links for every participant in this tournament. Make sure to go check them out already. If you haven't, and it's so weird, I'm telling people to go check out Nasher, Tactics, X-Tech, and other prominent YouTubers. That's gonna take some getting used to. But with all that said, make sure to keep an eye out as the tournament will start very soon. Best of luck to everyone else involved, and make sure to go tell Brian Storm that he doesn't have to embarrass me in the first round. <laughs> of course, if you have enjoyed this announcement video, feel free to support it and the channel in any way you deem necessary, and I will see you guys very, very soon.